This is the Horsepower Hour. Hello and welcome to yet another Horsepower Hour. This is, as always, your host, Andy. Joining me, as always, is the always fabulous and always here, Poiforticus and Masterson, Junior Senior Esquire Duke of Earl Grey, PhD, MD, MDMA, NA, AA, SAA. Sorry, Cosmonaut. Yes, I almost forgot. Well, that's close enough. Okay, all right. Close enough. I don't want to bore the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so what's good, man? You uh, lectured at any like colleges lately or anything? Mm, I gave a guy a lecture in the art of losing to a four cylinder today. Ooh, yeah. do tell. Oh, actually, I was on the way here. A uh, guy in a Daytona Charger 392. Uh, we were at the light. Just so you know, it's wet out. Uh, and if you haven't driven a mid engine car, they launch well since when you get mm-hmm. on it, all the weight transfers to the rear and there's an engine sitting above the transmission. So, and especially when it's wet outside, it makes me moist. A wild advantage in the rain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was just a street light, obviously. So, we ran her through first, second, basically, and I was a clear winner. I mean, it was just straight cut and dried victory. Yeah, I don't know if I gapped him, mm-hmm. but like I couldn't see him out the side mirror at all or out the side window. Yeah. So, so he was definitely in your blind spot. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. there any like, uh, well, you're, I mean, your car is not the loudest thing in the world, but you probably couldn't hear his car over yours. No, I could not. Right. 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 Yeah. I, I have to assume that the sound his car made was. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did. We took off and he let off and got back on it. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that was in an effort to engage in traction again. So, and actually I Googled it. Uh, those Daytona are supposed to have a zero to 60 of 4.4 and two ZZ swap spider is supposed to be around five seconds. So with the, uh, added rain, you know, in my, my favor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Advantage yeah. toy for sure. Yeah. So did you guys like do the roll by slow roll by did one another like, one? Or? Like limo tent. So mm-hmm. he kind of rolled up beside me. I couldn't see if he like gave a two finger wave or if he flipped me off. Uh, but I just smiled and waved back and uh, I had to turn at the next light and it was green anyway. So he went straight and I came to your house. I gotcha. That's fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about allegedly this all happened, by the way? We well, yeah, hypothetically. Okay. Hypothetically yeah, 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 yeah. in a yeah. dream I had. I got another hypothetical for you. I, I don't know if I ever told you this about, or told you about this. I, I feel like I did because it was, it was when we were living in Almsville and I had the V6 swapped MX3 and um, it was late, late, late one night. I mean, we're talking, it must've been midnight, one o'clock. I think I was coming back from seeing my girlfriend and uh, I'm going underneath of one of the overpasses and I see this slammed black, uh, look like a two door sedan. I think it was a GS 300. If my memory serves right, it was one of those Lexuses and it was VIP out. It was during that time when VIP style was very popular. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. And there was just something about the car. Like there was an aura about it or something, you know, as I drove underneath, he looked like he was speeding up. And then I noticed he was getting down off the off ramp. And I just looked at my rearview mirror and I thought that dude looks like he's coming pretty hard and fast. So I dropped her down into third. And, uh, as soon as I saw him get on the freeway and noticed his lights were aimed up a little bit, I was like, oh yeah, he's trying to run me down because that you remember how loud my MX3 mm-hmm. was. It was ridiculous. I can't believe I drove a car that was that loud. It was silly. It was stupid. It's cause it sounded amazing. Hey, there's also, also that, but, um, yeah, dropped her down into third, ran third gear out in third gear. He started kind of catching up to me, grabbed fourth. He got about up alongside of me not quite nosed out and then we just ran fourth gear out and fifth gear in a mazda you're never really going to use you're supposed to use but i stuck her in fifth and saw what we could ride out and i kind of pulled past him and then at a certain point i hit the brakes he hit the brakes we both slowed down he stayed next to me for a minute and then took off and it was there was something very magical special about that i i don't i don't know how to describe it there was just there's some like innate camaraderie when we would street race that I, I miss, you know, it wasn't all just hate and bullshit and people, you know, trying to trash talk each other. Like it wasn't, there was some real legitimate, 
mutual respect, you know? It's this weird feeling where no matter where you feel like no matter where you are, place you've never been, mm-hmm. you can be driving along, look over at a car and pull alongside it. And he can feel, you know, he knows and he knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then you guys run and then win, lose, you know, whatever. There's a head nod and you turn your separate ways, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a weird, a uh, weird form of communication. Yeah. Yeah. It is a form of communication. Just like Aaron Samuelson is saying, looking cute guys takes one to know one son. We appreciate you. Uh, I, I have to say that feeling of camaraderie, it feels like it's been in decline for a long time. Uh, when we first moved to Albany, hy- hypothetically, uh, I was driving along, uh, highway 34, which I-, I would not do it now, by the way, anybody out there listening, but, uh, it used to be just like a 24 hour race a like just go as fast and as hard you as you want. Anyways. Well, I. For a lot of people, we used to live right by Highway 34, and I used to just lay in bed and be like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a couple of sport bikes going at it. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a Subaru. Because you could just hear people just... Well, yeah, it's from I-5 to the main college there in Corvallis, so there's going to be some racing. And it's straight. It's a straight shot. So I was coming back from Corvallis one day in my uh, alleged all-wheel drive protege, and I pulled up next to this white STI. It looked nice. White, gold rims. It was lowered. I was like, oh, yeah, this thing is styling exhaust you know it sounded throaty and so i pulled up next to him there's this dude wearing a flat build hat kind of sideways sunglasses and he's leaned way way back in the seat you remember how that yeah, was popular yeah. for a long time Where you actually if you look to the side you're looking out the back corner of the back window instead yes. of the drivers yeah and one hand on the wheel vin diesel style you know that the whole nine so i rolled up next to him revved at him and protege was loud too uh, you know, open waste gate. And he looked over at me and I did one of these two fingers like you want to go. And uh, he nodded his head. And so I honked us off one, two, three, and then we both hit it. And he made the classic blunder, Koi, the classic blunder. Anyone out there that drives a Subaru, hear me and witness and behold the classic Subaru blunder. When you have a stock turbo on a Subaru, you are out of gas by 5,500 RPM. Anybody that short shifts a Subaru, like seriously, if you're grabbing gears at 5,000 RPM, that little teeny tiny turbo will stay spooled the whole time you're racing. He was running that bitch out to 7,000 RPM. And so every time, like he jumped out on me a little bit and then he got up past his power band and I started pulling on him and then he grabbed the next gear, pulled on me a little bit and then I pulled on him and it was just, and I had a rally. just kept pulling on each other. Well, no, eventually I pulled big time on him. I mean, that's, that's the way that works. And I slowed back down and I was like, Hey man, cool. And he rolled his window up and then took the next exit. Maybe a week later, maybe a week later, I walk into this private clinic that Corianne had first just started walking in. She's a chiropractor for anybody that doesn't know. And, uh, I see this fella that looks awful familiar. And I hold my hand up and I cover his forehead where his hat would have been. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Hey man, don't you own a white Subaru STI? And he's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I said, yeah, that was a good run. He was like, yeah, great. And that doctor never liked me. He left years later and we just never did get along. You know, I can see how someone would be upset when a dude in a protege Hi- hypothetically just, by like the way. clapped out looking mm-hmm. and then gets roasted by it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, feelings you know what mm-hmm. i mean like it seemed like a sure thing why why not just quick run this through you know third gear and mm-hmm. uh show this guy his place yeah and assert then, some dominance yeah. yeah then you realize that you were actually being hunted <laughs> you know? yeah 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 uh, it turns out that the uh, gorilla had a crossbow behind him yeah 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 it's a it's a it's a bad feeling when you realize that like oh uh, now, now it's become clear why he wanted to race because <laughs> there's many times if you have any kind of any car, uh, somebody will pull up and rev on you and it's not a fast car and you can tell. And then, you know, it just, what naturally happens you win. Yeah. Uh, but out of every a hundred or so you're like, well, we're going to, we're going to play this game again. Here we go. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. see what you did there. Yeah. 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 You have a sleeper. 
yeah, I always thought it would be fun. I, not that I'm looking to do this because what a horrible idea it is, but how fun would it be to have like a Chevy Beretta and, and do, you know, 3.8 supercharged swap on it. Maybe change that supercharger out for a turbo, you know, get yourself 500 horsepower at the front tire, something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just go trolling. That would be a lot of fun. But in a Beretta would be really fun. That's what I'm saying. Because it's right? like not only is it kind of a clappy old car, but you know, it was a little bit quick in its day. Mm -hmm. But it's also it's not an Ampor. Like it, it would just really be a good one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the Lumina car mm -hmm. of the same generation, yeah, where it kind of had a similar front end, but it was four door and absolute hot trash. That would be another fun one. The I believe the kind of next gen of a Breda where the Lumina and the Monte Carlo shared almost every body part mm -hmm. except for the doors because the monte carlo was a two-door lumina mm -hmm. wow that was a horrible car it literally looked like the two doors were just welded together into one <laughs> yeah, they were like, massive it's like a six foot door yeah like everything about it was hideous just disgustingly bad and it caused the door hinges to fail really quickly do you remember that oh, it had to have like yeah. the door was exquisitely long and heavy it had a, a power window motor that never worked just everything about it screamed mm -hmm. not a sports car. And by the way, we're already 11 minutes in, so I apologize that I'm doing this late, but thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for telling a friend about the program. If you like it, please subscribe, please share. We do appreciate that. We want to, you know, tell you how much we appreciate that. And uh, we really do enjoy doing this show for, for our audience. If you're listening on the podcast, think about jumping on the live stream sometime and if you are watching the live stream but you feel like you're not going to be able to catch it next time around we can be found literally on all of the podcast platforms if you find a podcast platform that we're not on i want to hear about it koi all street racing talk reminds me of uh when you and chris went and picked up that free geo metro oh Chris actually wanted me to tell this story because his fiance doesn't, he told her the story, but he doesn't really believe she doesn't really believe how it all went down. Yeah. So let's just set this in stone right now. This isn't so much for you guys. This is for my buddy, Chris. I'll just get this on record. If you enjoy it, you know, good for you. But there was a time when I was about 19 or 20 where our goal was we had sports cars, you know, and I should say sport compact cars that were mm -hmm. quickish. We wanted a free car to rally though. Like we missed the old days of having a beater that you could just trash. Right. So that was kind of our goal for a while. And this is pre gambler. You got to remember, remember that. But basically we had the same feeling. We wanted a gambler. We were looking for a free car. We'd been looking, we'd see one in a field. We'd ask around, you know, we'd knock on the door. Hey, what's up with that? Does it run? Do you want to get rid of it? This was back in the day when you could find a free vehicle. People were just like, hey, this piece of shit sitting in my driveway. Get it out of here. Well, there's that or it'd be like a hundred bucks. You right. know, they just they just need it gone. Basically, there was a lot of just asking if you can get something that kind of ran for fifty dollars or something. Sure. So we were asking around and probably three or four months of us daydreaming about a free car went by. And then I get a phone call from my buddy, Chris, and he's like, hey, bro, just got us a free car. It's a Geo Metro. Yeah. And it runs and I'm like, <laughs> it runs and I'm like, where are you? And he tells me, and it's literally the street I am driving on. He is on the other end of it. I am two and a half minutes from his location. I'm like, you just hang tight. I'll be there in seconds. And I whip in some old buddy of his that he went to high school with renting some house was out mowing. He saw him waved, saw this geo Metro with grass growing around. I was like, what's up with that? Dude's like, doesn't run. You can have it if you want it. And a dude hands him the keys and he jumps in and immediately fired up and ran, <laughs> ran solid for some reason. That was probably the only time it, it fired up and ran solid. Uh, if you would let it sit for like, I don't know what was wrong with thing. If you'd let it sit for like three days, it would fire up cold. If you drove it, got it warm and then shut it off. You had about an hour window to start it again, or you'd have to wait three days. Right. The only way, if you were in that like three day window, is we'd pull all the spark plugs, take a propane torch, <laughs> and just get the motor super warm, like hot to the touch, put the plugs back in, and it'd fire right up. Right. Cause it finally had compression. I'm not really sure what was happening. I uh, honestly, we because can, we can make some assumptions. Well, I'm guessing it was that, but then I don't understand why if it was like super cold, it would start. I, and I don't, rem I don't want to jump in here too many times. I want to let you finish, but. 
am I remembering correctly? Wasn't that dude like a Satanist or something? Hadn't they like put a curse on that car? I mean, there was something about that. I don't, that part. I don't remember. We'd have to get Chris to say, okay. The dude seemed a little odd, but I, I he was giving was something a free like that. car. I'm not gonna, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we said it was cursed because of the, the antics that ensued after that. Yeah. Well, sure. fair enough. We, uh, yeah. So we have this free car and yeah. so immediately we, we start gutting it and stuff. Uh, knock. <laughs> I burned my name in the door mm -hmm. with a torch at some point. It just said Koi and black on the side. There was some fake racing, you know, like duct tape racing stripes. Like it got modified, you mm -hmm. know, we did some stuff and then we just take it out and rally. And we kind of already figured out all the places where there was no ditch, you know, where the road was just leveled into a field. And this was kind of midsummer. So most around here, it's a lot of grass seed. And they've already cut it by then. So even though it's a field, it's the, it's like a mowed lawn almost. Mm -hmm. So we would be ripping around corners. It had these tiny, horrible tires. So if the corner said they're 45 miles an hour and you went around it at 45 miles an hour, it's like all tires screeching white knuckles. Like you're just like, oh, the limit is so low. <laughs> Why is yeah. it so bad at going around corners? Uh, so it kind of made things fun again for a little while because you're used to in a car if it said 45 back then like well let's double it and add 10 right that's right, our right. rule we'd be like double add 10 <laughs> so uh yeah we we just were loving this thing bombing it through all this stuff uh i went and picked up a friend of mine we drove by her house I'm like oh let's see if she's home somebody i went to school with picked her up and we're like check out this sweet car and we're mobbing it anna's in the back seat mobbing this thing cutting through fields and as i left your house i'm like yanking the e-brake up swinging mm -hmm. the back end around oh because that was one thing that worked fantastic the e-brake was amazing yeah and we went drove through a field come back like grass hanging out of this thing her dad's waiting in the driveway freaking pissed <laughs> like he saw me leave swinging the back end of this geo round <laughs> starts <laughs> screaming at me about taking his daughter and all this stuff uh she was wildly embarrassed and he apologized later thought it was funny i guess but uh so that was kind of the first start of the horribleness how we figured out the e-brake was good is when we left with this car left this dude's house and the dude like he'd already said we could have it free kind of had a weird look in his face when we we're leaving with it like what it runs like a little surprised you know mm -hmm. so but we're like yep bye and we left as you guys are following me home somebody was driving my car you're following me home and i see this dude kind of old man jogger with the short shorts like the hardcore jogger. Oh my God. Yes. And as I see it, like literally my, I start getting that Cheshire cat grin. <laughs> <laughs> and as I get up to him, I floor it, which you can hardly tell in a geo Metro. And then I just lock the e-brake. But since it's floored, the back end just kicks sideways. You know, you get like 11 degree slant on the car. Locked back tires, just screeching up on him. And he did a full full lawn dart into the ditch <laughs> thinking i was crazy <laughs> like yeah full out jump into the ditch like just hands up threw himself like there was an explosion yes um you guys got, caught him standing up as you came by screaming and waving his fists in the air and stuff i was oh i was dying i was absolutely dying he was freaking out so bad yeah oh my goodness it was so it, and listen not that i'm advocating this you guys don't don't ever do that you know, that's, that's bad news bears. Yeah, no, but this was hilarious. It was, yeah, we laughed hard and long and then we got home, got together, talked about it. Also laughed more harder yeah, yeah. <laughs> and more longer. And then me and Chris decided we we're going to take this thing out. We kind of made some runs. We were kind of scoping for some races. Come back. We hit up uh, McDonald's. I, and I, I mean, I got. I'm McDonald's for the whole class. Like I got like two, three bags. It's across my lap of McDonald's. He takes the exit that goes to the town. I mean, off the high highway that from the exit, maybe a uh, three quarters of a mile was our duplex. And it's got a downhill, you know, you go over the overpass downhill and, uh, he's like, Hey man, flooring it, you know? And I'm like, Hey man, there's a, uh, spot right up here where the cops sit all the time. Cause this drops down to a 40 and he's like, Bleh. anyways, he enters the <laughs> 40 at 65 which is about the max car could go pretty close to top speed uh, of course the cop was sitting there so uh he pulled us over in front of the duplex we all lived in and uh you know he's writing him a ticket and i'm like bro uh 
can can I, this is our house here can i just go in because my food's getting cold he's like yeah no i don't need you i'm like okay bye so we went in <laughs> uh started yeah. making fun of chris and eating our mcdonald's and then he came in with literally like a 265 five dollar ticket yep. uh which was the ticket that put him into a 30-day suspension <laughs> <by the way. laughs> yeah it was i totally forgot about yeah. that yeah so he rode his bike like nine miles to work every day for a while <laughs> Then maybe a week later or so, his ticket, he had, you know, he hadn't gone to court yet, so he didn't really realize the severity of how his life was about to change. <laughs> yeah. He, we take it out, I'm driving, and there was a spot in Salem that you could jump these train tracks. It was really aggressive rake onto these train tracks, but it was dark and I hadn't done it in a couple of years and we couldn't figure out where it was at. I couldn't remember. And this thing burned oil like crazy, so it smoked bad. And I'm bombing along and I floor it and it's smoking. I'm kind of whipping it back and forth, making the shocks move around. And I look behind me. It's kind of late. You know, it's like 10 o'clock. And I'm like, is that a cop bike behind me? Why is nobody rides a BMW at 10 o'clock in town? I'm like, I'll just turn here. See if he follows me. He followed me and it was a motorcycle cop. Uh, he pulled me over and he's running my stuff. I didn't really know how long he'd been following me. So I don't know what he saw me do. Right. There right. was, there was antics happening all evening. So I don't know. I'm kind of biting my tongue. I don't know what he saw me do. And I'm like, look, officer, I, I can't get any more tickets. I will take this thing straight home. Just let me go. I just, I, you know, I, I can't get any more. I'm going to lose my license. And he says, oh, no, it's not a big deal. I just want you to know that you have excessive emissions. And that's kind of, you're kind of on the edge. It's, you're really smoky. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's an old car. <laughs> There was literally a case of oil in the back seat to keep it topped off, you know? And he's like, no, you don't need to go home. It's fine. Like, I'm just letting you know. And I'm, since I got you, I'm running your stuff. And like, relief, you know? But mm -hmm. at that point, I'm like, look, Chris, I can't get any more tickets. Now, I've already I've already pushed my luck for tonight. You drive now. Yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> we hot, you know, Chinese fire drill this thing, and we leave. Cop was super nice. We, we mess around some more and more antics, and then at some point, Chris is like, we should go street racing. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> we should. Now that it's not you driving. Yeah. And so we go downtown where there's a little bit of action, but there wasn't anything going on. I'm like, well, let's go out to the, there was a wildlife area that was uh, really popular for street racing because the pullout viewing areas were exactly a quarter mile apart. So you could just park in these big gravel parking lots on each end. So we head out there, but the action usually doesn't start till 1130 or midnight there. Mm -hmm. So we're getting out there like, a, you know, allegedly, 11, allegedly yeah. in this dream that I'm about to wake up from. Right, right, right. Where you were in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where I was on a close course with professional drivers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're heading out there and it, right before you get to the main straight stretch where the actual drag racing goes on, there's a turkey's foot or whatever you want to call it. A three where three roads come together with yields and stop signs the road we're on is the main one so there's no stop sign but where all these roads three roads come together the center triangle is all gravel as we come in there he swings wide she goes straight into the gravel i mean you're doing 30 miles an hour pulls that amazing ease brake <laughs> <laughs> spins through the gravel and then drops it and floors it back onto the pavement and just drives down all the way down to the far end it's it's early so there's no cars there yet there's there was one waiting at the into the quarter mile we're going to the beginning of the quarter mile because we want to talk someone into racing a geo right right right. like our, you know we're gonna be hilarious it's gonna be funny we get there we stop we roll down the windows and kind of back it into a spot and i'm like do you do you hear do you hear a siren and he's like i do hear a siren and it's clearly getting closer at this point a cop comes just rocking in i mean hard locks it up in the gravel slides it sideways throws the door open, jumps out, kneels behind the door, yanks his freaking gun out. <laughs> he's, he's got us at gunpoint. We're frozen. We're like, what the, did, what is happening? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. we have a, he hasn't, there's no way he saw us do any of the crazy stuff. We haven't done anything crazy yet. Uh, he screams, get out of the car and lay on the ground. So we, well, he screams, get out of the car. So we both get up and he's like, hands up our hands in the air. You know, he's giving us the full, like if he's arresting known felons, He's like, lay on the ground with your hands above your head. So we both are on opposite sides of the car. <laughs> My car side is away from him. And I'm like, this seems weird because I'll disappear. But he's got a gun pointed at me. So I lay on the ground. 
And then he screams, not you, dumbass. <laughs> Come over here and lay on the ground. And so I get back up. It's muddy, dirty gravel. And there was like a mud puddle there. And I just, I'm not, I just laid in it. Like, I'm not, like, you're like <laughs> so I, I'm covered in mud. Mm-hmm. He comes around and uh, Chris is laying on the ground. I'm standing up. He then holsters his weapon, comes up to me, spins me around, assume the position, full frisk while my buddy's laying on the ground here. All right, you put your hands, you know, on your legs. You, he had me like sit on the car. Then he got Chris, went through a full frisk with him, cuffed him, handcuffs, sits him on the bumper of the cop car, and he's just screaming the whole time about <laughs> how reckless and dangerous we are, and just just losing. Like this guy is at out of a zero to ten, he's at one thousand. Like, <laughs> yeah. like if he had shot Chris, I'd be like, well, there we go. That's that's <laughs> like that was when you see stuff about cops on the news. Like this is a cop where if you just seen the video, if you're watching the start of this video, you would assume one of us was shot by the end. This right. dude was angry. I mean, I, I can't. It's hard to explain without being someone being there. Right. But I mean, this dude, he wanted one of us to t- talk or move so he could mace us. Like he, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was super angry, but being insulting and kind of goading. Like he wanted some action here. Right. Uh, Chris is on the bumper of the car. He's got his head down. He's screaming at him. And it, just this whole thing about how dangerous we are and stuff. He's like, and do you know how fast you were going? And Chris kind of looks up at him, goes 55, 60. And the cop like stuns. You can see him like catch himself like, oh, yeah, they weren't speeding there in a geo. Right. He's like, that's as fast as this thing can go, isn't it? It's like, yeah, 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 that's about as fast as it could go, I guess. Like I, and and you know, his whole thing was you know how reckless we were for spinning through that gravel there. And at some point, he kind of is finally he's running out of stuff to say because we didn't do that much illegal stuff other than grab the e bike through this gravel thing here, right? And he says, "Give me one good reason why I don't take you to jail for reckless endangerment right now." Now, my buddy Chris had been in college for some things. I'm really not sure what. Uh, he was not in college at getting, this point. Getting the ladies. That's what he well, was in college Yeah, I for. think he's there to get laid. But at this point, he's not in college. He's working like Trust Joyce or something. Like, he's working at a factory. Mm. He looks up the cop and he says, well, that really ruined my career options. The cop says, oh, really? He's And now the cop's almost getting more angry again. Like, he's getting excited that he's ruining someone's career options. He's like, what's that? And he's like, I'm trying to become a police officer. And the cop goes, just all that anger and rage just came down to zero. And he goes, puts his, I mean, just has his book in his hand and then he just kind of puts his hand down. That would ruin your career option. And just, it just changed the situation of total reverse turnaround of this situation. It was amazing. The cop also wanted to know whose vehicle it was. And we were kind of like, well, I mean, it's, it's his now it was mine. And I, cause we were all just, we were trading, you know, we just write fake bills of sale, basically like, okay, right. it's now yours. And then we'd burn through the 30 days of free insurance. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> but like, okay, now it's your car. So if we wreck it, it's on you. And at that point, I started out and it had my name in it. And then Chris, you know, was like, yeah, it's mine. He's like, why does it have his name on it? And uh, it's like, well, I mean, I burned it there with a torch. I don't, I don't know. And he had some more questions about that. And as he's shining his light around the car, he sees a case of oil. He's like, that thing burns that much oil. You need a whole case of oil in there. <laughs> we're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Anyways, the cop though, he, he just total reverse change around of his attitude. Tells Chris, here's the deal, bro. I'm going to put this date in my phone. My PDA this years ago, he had a PDA. Right. I'm putting this in there. I'm putting your name in here. I'm writing down a brief description. Of what happened? You're not getting a ticket, but here's what I am doing in one year. This is I'm setting this to send an alarm and I'm going to look at it. And then I'm going to run your driving record. And if you have a ticket, I'm going to write you this ticket as well. <laughs> so you got one year to keep it clean. And Chris was like, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll keep it there. And then Chris was like, all right, you're driving home. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove home and I'd been, I was like, while this all was going on, I'm just like, how much money is in my account? I don't know what, how much it would cost to bail someone out of jail for reckless endangerment. I've right. never... I've never even bailed someone out of jail. I don't know how to do it. Like, I'm super confused. I'm like, I think a oh, thousand bucks to bail somebody out of jail for this. I think I got a grand. Like, I don't know. And I'm thinking, how, how much money Andy got? All our other friends I know are broke. <laughs> Maybe I can get a couple hundred <laughs> yeah. bucks to get Chris out of jail. I don't even know how to get Chris out of jail. Uh, but he didn't go to jail. So then Chris took the 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 car 
And he's like, this thing's clearly cursed. Uh, you almost got a ticket. I got one ticket. I almost went to jail. What do we do? Almost got shot. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. And I said, we got to scrap it, bro. And so we scrapped it, took it into the place. I think they gave us like 138 bucks. Mm -hmm. Wasn't much. Not and enough to pay off. His we, we went straight to Taco Bell and bought one. <laughs> $38 <laughs> worth of Taco Bell, which is a lot of Taco Bell, brought her back to the apartment and uh, feasted like men. <laughs> <laughs> we drank our beer, and told our stories. Oh, man. That G and listen, I was, we were living together at the time. So, I mean, I can attest all of this is 100% true. It's, uh, that car was a curse. It was cursed. It was for sure cursed. And I mean, we would take this thing, we'd, we'd go out to eat or something. Mm -hmm. We'd be inside and we're like, how long has it been? Like 40 minutes. And one of us would get up, run outside, fire the car up and just. You can just hear around yeah. the parking lot, keeping this thing warm. And then we'd come charging back in. We it, kept, kept a torch in it in case we need to get the block yep, heated up yep. again. It wasn't exactly. It was more like. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that. It revved so slow. That was such a pile. Well, it wasn't really a pile. It, it was not a bad car for someone that only needed to drive once every three days. Yeah. It would have been perfect for that. Exactly. Exactly. And, and only be in the driver and only be out for 34 minutes. Yeah. You, you need to, you need to go drive it only on Sundays to a drive through and then yeah. come straight home. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then top the oil off. So there you go. I mean, that's the whole story. Um, Chris, you're welcome. Now everybody knows about uh, this story. Hopefully the cop doesn't watch us later on and go, hey, I'm going to retroactively. By the way, I think that was total BS. There's no way you can retroactively do a ticket. Is yes, there? sir. You have one year. Really? You have one year to go back on it. Yeah. Wow. And that that's why he's like, I got one year to decide this and we're going to wait till the last day. Hmm. That's hardcore, man. That's hardcore. If I was a cop, I don't think I would. I mean, that is what Coy, if you were a cop and you encountered something like that, would you be able to do anything besides just high five them and drive away? I would just, I would just pull up with my lights on, look at them, shake my head <laughs> yeah. and then slowly drive away. Marlo's joining. This show is awesome. Thank you, my friend. We appreciate Marlo. that. Um, it reminds me of one more quick story, Coy. Let's do it. I was on the way. I was living in Salem. Chris and I were living in Salem in the apartment. You remember yeah, off of Lancaster. Yeah. And I had the V6 swapped MX3 at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was driving up old Almsville road and people, uh, you're going to have to take my word for it. This was a, a windy curvy road that was uh, very fun to drive. It was one of my favorite roads to drive. And so I took it to work often. I just happened to be driving past. Oh, and the, uh, the jail is at the bottom of the hill. Yes. Yeah. So the jail uh, and the sheriff's department. Yes. The jail and the sheriff's department. Exactly. And so I'm driving by one morning and there's a dude outside thumbing it. And for whatever reason, I decide I'm going to pull over for him. So I pull over and he hops in and I'm like, Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, good buddy. I just got out of the drunk tank. Uh, can you take me to the little bar in, uh, Almsville? And I said, yeah, no, that's not a problem at all. And so, uh, he buckled up and we got rolling and right at the base of the hill, I slammed that shit down into second gear and just floored it. And he goes, Oh, whoa, 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 so shit, shit. <laughs> and the whole, I don't know what it was. Was it 15 corners, 25 corners, you I know, don't know yeah. on up the hill, but I'm rowing through second gear, third gear. We're, we're cutting every corner and I'm, I'm carving it. And he's like, no, ah, oh God, I'm going to puke. I'm going to puke. And he's just screaming at the top of his lungs. And we finally get up to the top and he's just like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you, man? Why would you do that? Just, just drop me off here. So I dropped him off and he was like, fuck you, bro. Fuck you. And then I never saw him again, obviously, but that was one of my favorite, like little just to be able to say that I did it, you know, yeah. it, it was, it was literally a gift from God. Koi. I knew that I was going to do it. And when I saw him hitching for a ride, I knew in that moment, what was going to happen. I'm looking up at my favorite road to drive on every morning. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's a slight uphill to the first corner from yeah. the jail. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now again, that car was loud as fuck, so I had to get away from the jail a little ways before I got on it. But uh, yeah, we had some wacky antics. And by the way, the antics aren't quite done. We kind of had uh, a brain explosion. Is that what you would call yeah. this, Coy? Yeah. So last week, when we finished recording with um, Kyle and Zach, Past Power Innovations, go and check them out, by the way. Um, we had an interesting conversation. As a matter of fact, I think it started on the show. You know, we started yeah. talking about all the homeless camps that are in Portland and the homeless are starting to actually set up little garages for themselves and park their cars in. Mm -hmm. And then Coy mentioned we should get a street race series going and we can start using those uh, garages that people are setting up or just set up some of our own because apparently the police don't care um, and, and start using those as like little places to duck into when uh, we get people after us. And then as the conversation continued, I started saying, well, what if we had shopping carts that we were trying to race? And things just kind of snowballed from there. I think the place that we're at right now is we're thinking we want to do a spec racing series. And if any of you are interested in doing this, we're going to try to do it all in the up and up. Um, I've spent some time looking at the legalities of how to get yourself a shopping cart. Of course, they can be purchased. If you do find one in a ditch that's abandoned, if it doesn't have any identifiable markings on it, and we're talking like if it's a plastic one that's red, obviously that's a target one, right? Mm -hmm. If it's massive, oversized, and green, that's a Winco one. I mean, there's there's stuff where, obviously, if you take one, the cop's going to be able to look at you and go, I know exactly where that one goes. However, you get places like, you know, grocery outlet or mega foods or just little shopping markets and stuff. They have mix match uh, shopping carts. The reason why people don't get busted with shopping carts very often, even though it is theft, is because if you can't identify where the shopping cart came from and no one is putting out that uh, they had a shopping cart stolen, then there's technically no crime. I know it sounds yeah. dubious at best, but just hear me out. Okay. If you find an old shopping cart that is in like a river on the side of the road, you are, you're picking up the garbage. You're actually making the world a cleaner, better place. If you pick that shopping cart up and then you take it home. It's true. And from there, uh, we have a few options. You, you were thinking about using weed whackers, right? I was thinking about a weed whacker motor. Yes. But that's that's not a lot of power. But we got we got to all kind of come together and decide mm -hmm. what we're using. Mm -hmm. You came up with we just say look, you can use up to the fourteen horsepower Har Har Arbor Freight Predator motor. You, I I think that'll kill somebody. You can do whatever you want to this motor. Yeah, but it has to be the Harbor Freight Predator. Sure. And that's our spec. It's like you you can't go, you can't show up with a Honda, or a you know Olin V twin twenty two horsepower. You got to have the hundred and forty eight dollar harbor freight motor yes now yeah. if you if you have the skills to tune that thing from there more power to you literally mm -hmm. and figuratively mm -hmm. yeah removal of the governor i kind of want to make it stock motor for stock motor because i still think that this is going to be wildly dangerous yeah but uh, wildly dangerous is good but i need it real day like <laughs> you need to feel real danger like, like i need to actually see someone get hurt before i'm going to dial it back right and I'm just saying, and then we just, we got to spec the tire size, right? Is mm -hmm. that how we do this? Mm -hmm. We haven't come up with that exactly yet. Cause we're not sure how much of this will be on asphalt versus turf. Well, my feeling is that the standard shopping cart tires need to be left alone. And, uh, then you get powered by an external or an auxiliary wheel. That's my feeling. I like that. But I remember riding in shopping carts, like out to the car, just mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, I remember my teeth chattering and it hurting then. Sure. I'm an adult now. Like, well, nobody said this is going to be easy. For <laughs> I don't need it to be painful just to participate. I need it to be painful when it goes south. All right. So that leaves us with uh, two options. And, and I guess, you know, that's where we're kind of starting out here. And this is where we would like some audience participation from you guys. Do we do the series where you're riding inside of the shopping cart or 
do we do a series where you're writing outside of the shopping cart? So our two options right now are inside of the shopping cart and using a weed whacker motor, almost like an outboard, right? Mm -hmm. And, and running it like a rudder as well. Or, or we make a platform to stand on two wheels on either side and you stand on it. And then that is connected to the back of the, the shopping cart, which has the motor and the powered wheel. And it, there's a swivel there. And then you, you just steer it with the shopping cart. That's kind of where we're at. So we need to figure out which one of those we're going to do. And uh, don't worry, I'll post up a poll in the Facebook group and, and you'll, you'll hear about this a few more times. But if we decide to do a spec tire, mm -hmm. like, look, you can also use the Harbor Freight lawnmower tires. Yeah, yeah. Then it's kind of whatever you want. You want to sit in it and put a steering wheel on this thing. You want to stand on the back like one of those commercial stand behind mowers. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's kind of on you then. So that's so we need to decide, do we do a spec tire, you know, air in the tire mm -hmm. and then spec motors? Do we go with a a traditional, you know, horizontal driven 10 horsepower? You know, we decide on a horsepower like Briggs and Stratton type, you know, lawnmower type engine, or do we go with a weed eater power situation? The, the barrier to entry money wise is actually very similar because buying yeah. the weed whacker is a hundred and some odd bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it is buying the Harbor freight motor. You can find them on sale for about 99. And then when it comes to the wheel and the chains and the fabrication and stuff, mm -hmm. just from what I've seen, I, I think it's going to be, kind of a toss up to be honest yeah that's kind of scrapyard you know i mean you can go and order that all from a go-kart go place online mm -hmm. or you can get at you know an old lawnmower and probably get most of what you need right 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 so that's where we're at do you want to call them uh, the name tell them the name that we came We've up with we've decided to call it bum rush <laughs> i think we should call it bum rush 2000 i do too know? i do too 20 or you know <laughs> bum rush 2020 uh br2k there we go. Yeah. BR2K. BR2K. So one of the rules is you're going to have to dress up like a transient. That's just the way it is. Especially if we do end up holding this race on public roads, because <laughs> then we're going to need to be able to blend in with the background, if you know what I'm saying. That, And then also it's not, it, from our research, if we are racing these things on public roads, since they're under the 40 cc it's not really that big a deal like there may be some tickets but not really also if we're going to go with a spec tire air and tire it's possible these show up if we get a group going doing these it's possible these show up at a gambler situation right which would be pretty awesome to be gambling in this thing you could put the trash in the cart you know bingo picking up the trash like, yes yeah so you're actually doing the world a favor that's not trash those are my possessions you pick it <laughs> Also, like the Hoop DX, like mm -hmm. the little off-road, not a race they do. I I don't know the guys that run this, but I feel like if we said, hey, we got six and a half guys <laughs> with, with off-road shopping carts. Uh, we just want a 15-minute, you know, we'll all get out on the track at the same time for 15 minutes and yeah. do three laps. I feel like they could be talked into it. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know them, haven't talked to them, but I feel like from a spectator point, spec shopping cart racing. Yes it's a it's a win and i can almost guarantee you if we can convince the gambler guys to let us do it we're going to show up and there's going to be five more dudes there with shopping carts that are like hey we heard your shopping cart racing yeah i guarantee it maybe guarantee not this it. year but next year there for sure would be oh for sure uh kyle coleman says speak with your local scrapyard we've put the feelers out with ours i say we do this uh marlo toes he says 14 horsepower harbor freight motor for sure I like riding outside. I also think it'd be a little safer if you were standing on, on the back of a tiller, but uh, that's just me. Here's my thing though. Can we, can we lower these things down? Can I cut the basket and drop it down? I that's, that's a conversation. Whether you're riding outside or inside, I feel like that does make it safer. Or do we do two, two classes? Do we do a full modified and a stock spec, you know? <laughs> a ride in a ride out oh there we go i the the reason why i'm kind of hung up on the whole tiller steer thing is because that way it looks like you're pushing a shopping cart it does except for when you're trying to go around a corner and you're squatted down <laughs> <laughs> squatted down leaning to, leaning to the inside grabbing the side of the shopping cart you know yep. steering the thing yeah uh until you get to that part 
we had actually talked about having uh, Kyle jump in a cart. Basically, we were going to cut holes in the front of the shopping cart if he was sitting in it, you know, and have his feet just sticking straight out of the shopping cart. Because Kyle, I forget how tall you are. You're you're a tall drink of water, though. Uh, Zachary Arn says, go low or go home. I mean, listen, you're right. It would be safer. You're lowering the CG. But we do have to have some rules for the spec regulation. I agree. And, and I'm just throwing this out there. This had originally started with some aesthetic. You like you wanted to look like a homeless person racing a shopping cart. I, I agree. But even if you were homeless and sitting in the basket of the shopping cart, still mm-hmm. good. Like it still works for me. All right. Fair enough. Like if you're standing behind it with a motorized thing, dressed as a homeless guy and I drive by, I'll be like, wow, most creative homeless dude ever. Mm-hmm. Like I'll actually believe you're homeless. Mm-hmm. If you're in it, not, not so much. I understand what's happening. Like it both ways though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and to make up for the weight disadvantage, like to make us all on the same level playing field, I propose getting a whole bunch of canned foods, shoes, uh, cartons garb- of water, cartons of water. Yes. And we even out the weight distribution of the carts. And then when the race is done, we can just go ahead and donate those. So technically we're doing this for charity. And if we did this right, like if you had it full, like orange crust soda and you wrecked, there yeah. could be an epic orange crush explosion. You know what Ooh, I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. They're, they're going to be well shook up. Oh, can I put some like blood bags underneath of my clothes? Well, I'm talk, talking I'm just, for weight. Okay. But like if I wreck in front of a cop and he comes running over and I've got these blood bags and then I start scooping into the blood bags and trying to touch him guaranteed. I'm not getting arrested. It, possibly shot though. <laughs> yeah there is that yeah he's watched a little too much angel and he's like zombie homeless yeah quick well, disclaimer we're not making fun of the homeless at all no i am uh <laughs> but this you know we're gonna be talking about this probably more yeah neat show but we need you guys to write in i think we're gonna make a comment section a post on the on the fan page you know so if you guys want to jump in on that one that's there and weigh in yeah yeah uh listen we still have quite a bit of a show left to go, so let's get a, go ahead and get into it. Uh, we got some news, Koi. Ready for this? Ready. Uh, first up is the new 2022 Honda Civic was leaked in production form. Guess who it was leaked by? China. 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 You want to know who leaked it? Ask China. <laughs> Maybe that's something you should ask. China, <laughs> but take a look at this thing. It's actually pretty close to what the prototype or the concept was. They kept a lot of the same lines. They did. I don't like the front end on this. I like the headlights. What they did with that grill has that overbite, mm-hmm. uh, weird forehead looking thing. I don't, I don't know what's going on there and I don't care for it. What do you think the civic crowd is going to end up calling that? Because you know how they have brow. Uh, well, they have names for everything, you yeah. know, like the WRX was the bug eye WRX or the slant eye, which mildly racist. This, <laughs> this is probably going to be the angry eyes civic. It's not really angry eyes. It's got like a, you know what it reminds me of the upside down face kit on family guy. Oh yeah. 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 A little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's got kind of a unibrow look thing going on. Uh, Chrome Magnum mm-hmm. thing. I don't know. It's a little. It bumps me when I look at it. It's got a five head. Yes, Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, What do you think the Civic Si is going to look like, though? I mean, we've heard word that it's going to be a bit more toned down. It's not going to have quite as much flair as the current generation Si is. I have no idea, man. It it could go any way. I don't know why they would take away all the flair. I feel like that's the main selling point of it. It's like, ooh, turbo Honda, pow, factory warranty, mm-hmm. and in your face, lime green, orange, you know. Yeah, it's got jazz hands. I feel like it's that's one of the of main, flair. main selling points of it. But maybe they uh, want the, like, track racing crowd to actually be into it. You know, mm-hmm. they want mm-hmm. a 40 or 50-year-old to be like, well, this car is genuinely fast, even though it looks like it just came out of a 19-year-old's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I don't know. It's an interesting little tidbit. Um, I wanted to talk about it just simply because uh, Honda is notoriously tight lipped with their stuff. Yes. So to get images leaked of their of their new automobile. And of course, it had to come from China. It's it's so ironic. I'm sorry. It just is. 
Um, we got uh, the new Pagani V12R. This is going in the uh, Zonda and the Huayra, or maybe just the Huayra, because they're not really making the Zonda anymore, are they? I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is a new V12. It's a one-off V12, but come on. If they're making this much hype about it, they have to be considering production. This would be a wild, wild production vehicle, though. 9,200 RPM redline in a V12. Mm. It makes top-end power at 8,800 RPM. So you, it's just begging, begging to be yes. ripped on. Let's go ahead and hear this. how this thing sounds, shall we? Crazy, bro. Crazy. Sporting a semi, aren't you? Give me a minute. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> uh, uh, can you imagine? I like how they showed the engineers, you know, behind the, in the, in the booth, just straight faced, like kind of looking around, looking at instruments, like, doo, 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 hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. like they're driving a bus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're running this massive engine dyno. It sounds amazing. And they're just, they're not really even committed. They're they're thinking about like how they're going to play Angry Birds at lunch. Right. You know, right, like, right. they're not. Their senses have been so dulled. They've watched so much porn. They can no longer get off. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. At a certain point, like on one of those, I would I would have told one of the engineers like just kind of look at the other one, give him a nod, a mm -hmm. wink. I don't know something to run, show. Run your that, fingers through his hair. <laughs> stick your thumb in his mouth, like something. Bite your lip. I don't yeah. know something. Bite his lip. Like, <laughs> do something to show me how amazing this is i'm sitting here like i'm having heart palpitations like i'm losing my my stuff over here yeah and they're just like <laughs> i'm gonna push this button <laughs> oh, look that dial's moving <laughs> i wonder if uh, we can watch the football tonight not the american kind because we're not in america but you know the one with the, the black and white ball <laughs> hmm, is it tea time yet hmm Mm -hmm. Like they're just totally not into it. And meanwhile, the headers are glowing bright, glowing red. orange, red fire shooting out of the exhaust. Solenoids, freaking moving, or I don't even know what those things are. Something's moving. Sounds like an indie car going off. Yeah, uh, this is an Italian vehicle, right? I assumed that Hurricane was, but I could be wrong. I've never actually looked into that. My pants are how you say cremosa. <laughs> <clears throat> The fact that those engineers were just so desensitized to it makes me angry. It's it's sad. It's very sad. It's very sad. We need to take them sometime. What they should do is send them to watch like the newest. Uh, I don't know. Shit, whatever. Chevy and Paul or whatever crap pile Chevy makes mm -hmm. these days. That engine on the dyno and, and those engineers can go visit that and just be like, wow. Sounds so. Oh, uh. mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know what? Maybe Stellanus has it right. Maybe them disbanding all of the SRT engineers, maybe they're getting too comfortable. You know, mm. maybe they were saying to the guys higher up, they're like, listen, four digits are bust. If somebody can't take this rig to TX2K and run it in stock form, then we're not doing our jobs. And and maybe that's when the bosses said, man, we got to pump the brakes here a little bit, boys. It's possible. I doubt it, but I'm just throwing that Speaking out there. Speaking of our next article, mm -hmm. clearly no one pumped the brakes at Ford. Uh, this is good news. I mean, literally good news for everyone, by the way. Not, not well, not for Stellanta. Not for Stellanta. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the Ford F-150 Raptor R is confirmed by Ford and expected to have 700 plus horsepower. You've talked about this before, Coy, how almost immediately after the TRX was announced, Ford was like, huh, that's cool. Yeah, we've we've got a 700 horsepower motor too. Yeah, we're just kind of finishing button things up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, we now have the Raptor Trail with 702 horsepower. And Ford was like, ha, ha. 
Yeah. Yeah. We heard it was 702, but we're waiting till you said it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ford's uh, official reply was for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like when somebody's like, I've been to Disneyland more than anybody. I've been seven times. And you're like, wait, how many times more than anyone? And they're like, yeah, seven times. And you're like, uh, I'm going next weekend. It'll be my ninth time to Disneyland. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're counting everybody in the room or just people that haven't been to Disneyland more times than you, but I've been more. Yeah. yeah. So that's what Ford was doing. They're waiting for Dodge to just throw out a number. Yeah, exactly. Or, Ram or whatever. Yeah. What, whatever it was. Um, I am curious though. How many of the Raptor R's do you think will get sold to, I'm not going to use anyone specifically, but those YouTubers that like to buy brand new rigs and then wreck them. I'm pretty for sure. The views. I mean, there's already been some TRXs that that's happened mm -hmm. to. So I'm assuming immediately. I'm uh, not sure how many. I hope not too many. Now they're talking about limiting production of this. I mean, all of the vehicles are limited production pretty much. All of these special edition vehicles. So what do you think? Are they going to do some screening before they sell these to people? No, I don't think they will. I don't think it'll be. I, we'll see. I mean, it's, they just say 700 plus this could have 900 horsepower. I don't know. I'm guessing it's going to have 725, you know, something like that. I'm thinking Which so what I would really like to happen right now is after this kind of get fi finalized, Dodge just leans forward, goes, yeah, our, our 702 horsepower. That was at the wheels, not the crank, you know, and just bump forward back. Can you imagine if they're like, wait, how much does yours have? Yeah. So that, that is more than ours, but ours is 702 at the wheels. So that's actually like, you know, 825 at the crank. Hmm. They won't because it's the same. I mean, we all know what motors in the TRX, but where, where does it, this, I would love this if they did that. Yeah. But where does this rivalry end? Like will Dodge announce like, by the way, it turns out the T-Rex had a demon and now it's the 900 horsepower one. Oh, they'll just, they'll, I keep saying like you did, they did the, uh, the TRX, which is T-Rex. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's all the whole raptor killing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, all they got to do is just go to Jurassic Park and buy the rights to that Endosaurus or whatever it mm -hmm. was that mm -hmm. and just be like, yeah, this is Dodge Endosaurus <laughs> Indominus Rex. That's what it was. Indominus Rex. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like was the TRX. Now it's the Indominus TRX. They better do it real soon. Otherwise, it's going to turn into an androgynous Rex because, I mean, that's the way this is headed. Yeah. Uh, like I, I like the rifle. I yeah, mean, we all win. We're all winners of this. Well, the people that can afford a hundred and forty thousand dollar truck are right. Well, that truck will eventually not be a hundred and forty. Yeah. And every time they wreck one of those, that means an engine is available. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For the consumer, this is better. I like it. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, this uh, truck rivalry. I don't know, man. I thought we'd have a little bit more of the car rivalry, but uh, Dodge really has just kind of stayed at the top of the muscle car game. I mean, we have the Camaros, we have the Mustangs, but at this point, it's really kind of hard to compare them because it just depends on who you are and what your nostalgia factor is. Yeah. I mean, it's just with the truck market having not built that many high horsepower ones, it's easy to just keep breaking that fat, you know, most powerful truck record. Right. Like we've always said now, if they just make one of these two wheel drive and, uh, you know, on the ground and fast, AKA Viper truck style mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I would be super. I mean, I'm into these as well, but I need to see the fastest, not the highest horsepower. Right. Yeah. I want to see the fastest factory truck. We're ripe for a street truck showdown, ripe for it. I, I mean, it needs to happen before all of these liars go full electric before everything which changes, we know that they're not going to. i need to see dodge and ford go at it mm -hmm. with the fastest street truck one being the the hellcat motor the other being a turbo twin turbo ecoboost v6 like it's going to be old school versus new school it, it, it is just that that battle that rivalry is so ripe for the picking it yes. needs to happen like we need to get them all at the same table but look you got a Hellcat motor, right? you got a turbo, right? and then you got a GT Le Mans, Hellcat, Demon, but uh, street truck. Mm -hmm. And then they can be like, oh, 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 okay, yeah, this would be pretty good. And it's going to maybe not lead CNN because Orange Man bad or whatever, but still we can, uh, we can get this on some, you know, car and driver, mm -hmm. motor trend. Like it will lead the car news. Jo Joplink. 
Jalopnik. Jalopnik. Who I I don't recommend going to Jalopnik. That's not. They're going to have, that's just going to be solid, solid truck news, you know? Yeah, I agree. Well, speaking of uh, throwing bigger motors and things and going faster, I think it's about time for our smoking dealer smoking a dude. What do you think, Coy? Love it. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, I'm not real sure how to feel about it. Um, yeah. Those of you at home with children, avert their eyes. Smoking deal or smoking a doobie. And this week, smoking a deal or smoking a doobie, we've got something from Facebook Marketplace. Um, let's see here. Who sent this to us? Oh, Sean Kastner from yes. the Northwest Auto Sports Association yep. sent this to us. Look at this monstrosity. It says Lambo 6.0 VT replica, $22,000. Let's start at 30. He dropped the price to 22. So, Koi, it's a replica. What exactly does that mean? That means I can only believe that this started its life as a Fiero and then was converted to look like a Lamborghini. Now, that being said, it does. It, it looks Lamborghini ish. I'm not saying it looks like a Lamborghini. Like, I mean, I can tell this is not a Lamborghini, but this is the best version of a Lamborghini clone that I've ever seen. I agree with that. The dimensions are pretty fucky, but that's, what's going to happen when you're basing mm -hmm. it off of a Fiero. Yeah. You got to move some stuff around. Mm -hmm. A lot of times these things look like they were put together with styrofoam and, and Bondo. Mm -hmm. uh, the kit looks factory. I'll give them that. Like it looks good. The interior, amazing. Looks fairly modern, honestly. Yeah, the interior. It doesn't look like a Lambo interior, but it looks pretty good for what it is. Like I mean, the dash and everything, beautiful mm -hmm. leather. Like steering wheel looks like a factory steering wheel, which I don't know if it is or not. But I mean, everything looks factory and good, and nice stitched leather. Yeah, and it's a manual, so you know, good things happening there. Uh, we're just going through the photos here. Those lime green wheels to match the lime green body. That's pretty interesting. Not, not my style of choice, but whatever. And even though he's got very low pro tires on this, when you see the full scale car, don't these wheels look kind of small? I feel like these are 17s. I mean, maybe they're 18s. I don't know. Roll through the pictures a little bit more. That image right there you can tell something's real off yeah the front doesn't look as lamborghini as it does ferrari right. i don't know it's it does have a center exit exhaust so there was some forethought there yeah that looks good and now we get to the engine what are we staring at here well it looks like the engine out of a uh, car with one hundred fifty thousand miles that lived its life at the coast not like a tropical coast, but like a, you know, northern rainy one where like twilight characters live at. Ooh, so they sparkle? The, well, yeah, they still sparkle, but I yeah. mean, the motor just is lives in darkness and rain. Oh, yeah, no, the, mar the motor doesn't sparkle. 38 days a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If the motor was a vampire, it would sparkle. It's not a vampire, so it is very dirty and crusty. Uh, this is a Pontiac uh, 3800 supercharged, so it came out of an Oldsmobile... Um, gosh, I'm losing it now. The we just know them as grandma cars. Yeah, there's the Buick, uh, Trans, no, not Trans Am, Grand Am, Grand Am. Yep, I think had some of those. The GXPs. Yep. The, mm -hmm. I mean, there's uh, yeah, there's a couple of them that, that had this motor, and, and fairly quick motor, honestly. So let's uh let's read this description real quick. Quick sale price twenty two k. Very well built. You won't be disappointed. Stops traffic in all directions. Just getting gas is a major event. Pontiac 38 supercharged V6 with a five-speed manual transmission. Hey, five-speed, that's good. <laughs> uh, Pirelli tires, touchscreen, Bluetooth, Pioneer sound system, backup camera, front airlift suspension. You will not find a nicer car for this price. Meh. I mean, Kit Fiero, maybe? I can find a nicer car for 22,000. Now a nicer cloned, whatever, for a, for a Lamborghini <laughs> Ari. Yeah. Lamborghini. Hamburghini. Lamborghini. Uh, yeah. Lamborero. 
there is an, an unbelievable amount of work that has gone into this and the work looks good. Here's, here's where I'm at with this coin. Every real car guy knows what this is. Yes. They know it's not real. I can tell this is not real from a mile away. It will catch my attention. And I'll go, what the, <laughs> I look, you know, I'm going to go, Ugh. looks really good for a clown. Yeah. Like I'm going to go, Ugh. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, it is a weird, I'm going to expound on that. It's a weird rebound because you're like Lamborghini, uh, Fiero clone. So we've just taken like 10,000 yeah, steps down up here. Ooh, exotic Lamborghini, old school, exotic Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. This is a Diablo or Countach or something. And then straight down, straight down as I realize what's going on a uh, death Valley, bro, yeah. below sea level. And I go, wow, a Pontiac and not just a Pontiac, but a Pontiac Fiero that somebody put money into a lot of money. Gross, mm -hmm. bro. Gross. And then I go, looks good for a clone though. Like maybe the best clone I've ever seen. And then I'm coming back up. I get a little above sea level. You know, I'm looking out over the city. I'm like, you know, it's disgusting, but I appreciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sickened, but interested. <laughs> yeah. You disgust me. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah gross what what's going on here pop the hood yeah yeah exactly uh we were talking about this before we came on and uh you said something and it's you're 1000 percent right if this had been one of the the fiero 3.4 formulas so like one of the last 87 88 the high performance i air quotes high, high performance, performance fieros and it had the the 3.8 supercharged swap in it Mm -hmm. I think it would sell for more money. Eh, maybe not more money. This sold. I don't know what for. This is already sold. It, it, we yeah. don't know this. Disclaimer. Sold it is sold. Could it be 22,000? Surely not. I mean, people did get their stimmies though. This is stimmy season. That's 1,400, not 22,000. Per kid, bro. Mm. We're not going to get it up to 22,000, but you're going to get a chunk. He probably sold it for 20. You don't think so? Yes. I see. I'm a car guy. I'm more of a race car guy, to be mm -hmm. fair. I don't know any of my car guy friends that would really go and buy this. I feel like it's not really for car guys. This is for guys trying to impress a lady, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, I, I don't know what this is for. It's an ego thing, but for car guys, it, it's not an ego thing because they know it's fake. So for me, I mean, truly, honestly, I would. Even if it was the same price, I would take a regular Fiero that had already been swapped with the five-speed manual, tra manual transmission over this. In a heartbeat, yes. Yeah. Any day, any time. I know it's not real. I yeah. know it's not a Lamborghini, so it, it doesn't work. It's kind of the same thing where I'm looking for a certain kind of car. Mm -hmm. If I know there was a special edition of that that's considerably better, that's the one I want. Like, that's what I'm into. Right. I don't want a badge special edition. I would be sickened by that. I don't want clones. You know what I mean? When I guess that's the whole point here is this is, this is actually a step down. It would be an embarrassment to be seen in it for me. Like, yeah, it would be a joke car. Like I would get a like blonde rocker mm -hmm. mullet and mm -hmm. drive around. I could do that. Yeah. You'd pretend to be Axl Rose, not back in the day, but now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Top hat and everything. So where are you landing with the price on this? The fact that it sold throws me off. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. The fact that I don't know puts me in a weird place. There are guys that would, that would think this is cool, like drug dealers and stuff. You know, if I had the disposable income, like sitting here right now, and I was just going to do it for the funsies. Okay. Do it for the lulls. Do it for the gram. Okay. Koi. I would throw three grand at this car. Three grand would be your max. Mm -hmm. I would go more than that. You would not, not because I want it. Like this isn't what I would buy it for, but I feel like what it's worth. I'm going to say 12. I feel like it's worth 12. Yes. I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I think that if this sat on the right dealership lot for a while, someone would get 12,000 for it. As a matter of fact, I think someone would get 15 for it probably. Yeah. 
But I'm asking, what would it what would take, it take you? to me to go down and buy this? Yes. Ugh. I, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm sickened. Yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I don't know, man. And the fact that he painted it this insane lime green like makes it worse. I'm like, please don't look at me. Okay, so how much would it cost and still be worth it to drive this over to an NWAA uh, autocross event where Sean is? Sean, who several episodes ago told us that uh, uh, Honda Civics are bad to autocross because they're front-wheel drive, they're hot garbage, patooey. You need to get a Fiero instead. And and people know it's me. I can't put on like a flat bill hat and sunglasses. No, and you can dress mustache. however you want. Oh, see, as a joke, like as a meme car, where I just roll up in like a white hoodie and a flat bill, and just be like, "Yo, I'm gonna trash all you, my Lambo." Yeah, and talk a bunch of crap, and then get a really mediocre, mediocre time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then still just stay on it, and talk more trash. Like I would enjoy the daylights out of doing that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and what's that experience worth to you? I'm going with like the three grand spot there okay so you're you're in it with me about three thousand yeah three grand okay all right listen that's where we land i mean this thing is a steaming hot dube obviously um if you guys out there know anything about the vehicle know anything about fieros know anything about kit cars in general let us know where do you land on it what's the value of it because hey we're just two dudes that are you know, BSing about this. We don't have any idea what something like this actually costs to put together or what the value is. We just know that it's a lot less than what he was asking. So uh, let us know in the comments, is this a deal? Is this a dube? And uh, as far as we're concerned, I mean, we're landing squarely at a dube, right? But yeah, it's dube. Beyond dube. It's you don't dubious. Even wanna, yeah, you don't even want to look at it anymore. No, no. I'm Like I said, I'm, a, I'm cringe. It's cringy. So for Andy, it's a dube. For Koi, it's a demon spawn. Smoking deal or smoking a doobie. All right, you guys. I think that is about all we have for today. Uh, Koi, what do we got going on in the future, man? We got the Bum Rush 2000. Uh, we're still looking at our options for the Gambler. Yep. Maybe looking to autocross at MR2 here pretty soon, right? Pretty soon, yeah. And you actually need to look up some dates and stuff. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, we'll be rolling around the Pacific Northwest. You guys are going to be able to spot us at some different events and stuff. Obviously, as things open up, we're still rolling with the Corvid. So, you know, it, it's going to happen in due time, but it will happen. You will see us out there. So please keep your eyes open. I want to thank you again for tuning in. I want to thank you for telling a friend about the show. And uh, this has been quite an interesting one, Koi. I always like talking about the good old days with you. You know that. Yep, yep. I'm excited for the bum rush series. We're definitely going to be doing that. That's not just a pipe dream. We're actually doing that for real. It's got to happen. Has to. That's right. That Pagani V12. Can't wait to find myself one of those engines and swap it into the Festiva. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for listening one more time. And for Koi Forticus and Masters and Junior Senior Esquire, Duke of Earl Grey, the Zane, we will see you next time.